Hello, hello, hello. Um, this is the equivalent of Harriet's ha handstand for me, I hasten to add. I work with comedians all the time, but this is one of the scariest things I've ever done. Um, so, um, I'm going to start by saying something I don't normally say, which is that women aren't funny. Now, you wouldn't expect me to say that with a company called Funny Women. Uh, but actually, a lot of people do say it to me. It's why I set up Funny Women. A lot of you in this room probably think women aren't very funny. And a lot of you will think that you are not yourselves funny. Unless you're a man, of course. And then you're hilarious. Um, <laughs> now, that's very interesting because if you look at groups of women and when we're socializing together, what is the pervasive thing that you see? Women are always laughing with each other. Socially, we know how to laugh. We love laughing with our friends. But when you look at men in a group, they are probably look, laughing either at each other or at something. There's a very different style of use of humor. Women tend to use it in a very collaborative, community-based sense. Men tend to use it to divide, conquer, and I, as I like to say, woo. More of that later. So, we're going to take a look at the hunter-gatherer. I hope you like my cave painting. Have a close look. So here we are. We're in the, uh, the, the hunter-gatherer, the primal scene. You have the traditional uh, encampment. The men have gone off <laughs> with their shopping trolleys in that picture, uh, <laughs> gone off into the woods to, to hunt their prey, to bring back the bacon for the, for the encampment. The women are left behind <laughs> dancing madly, as you can see, um, cooking, and most of all, they're talking to each other. They are communicating. It is that art of communication which is absolutely essential to that community to make it work, to communicate with each other. The men back out there in the woods are probably shouting each other, probably saying something funny to each other. They're using that to, to spike their, to get their support and to get that, that hog in the, in the woods. The women back at camp are telling stories. That is a big thing. What we are, we are the purveyors and the custodians of our social histories. We are the people that pass the information down to our offspring and our offspring pass it on to, to theirs. So we're very important. Communication is absolutely essential. But there is a reason for some of this as well. Our brains are wired, are, are wired very differently, male and female brains. Um, I love this quote from New Scientist. Women take significantly longer than men to decide whether or not they find something funny. We know it's true, because it was in New Scientist. Um, yeah, and this is because we have much more going on in our prefrontal cortex as women than the simple men do. Um, that means that we're absolutely fantastic at multitasking, and we all are, but it means we're absolutely rubbish and take much longer to get a joke than a man does. Probably why we're not, but that's probably why we're much more risk averse to comedy as well. We have a natural um, dis disregard of it. So the other thing that happens with all this activity in our prefrontal cortex is we're horribly overthinking. You've heard of the expression paralysis by analysis. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm the master of it. We're thinking and thinking. We're overthinking things. And you know, we're more frightened of success than we are of failure. I mean, some of that has come up already today. In, in various speakers' talks about how we overthink to the point where we don't go for that promotion, we won't apply, we won't stand on stage like this because I can't wear high heels. Um, actually, I have to say comedy is my killer heel. I thought of that earlier. I just thought that was a good line. <laughs> thought I'd better get that one in. Uh, but, you know, we, we have different ways of dealing with things, but we do do this awful thing of overthinking, and it actually stops us in our career paths. So, um, fear, going back to fear, yes, that is a thing that really holds us back. It really does. But we do have positives about our, um, our aptitude to take things on board and work with them in a different way. And one of the areas that we're very successful in is social media. I, did, I, put, I had to put this in just because I love the little old ladies with their laptop. But, you know, why talk to each other when there's Facebook and Twitter? And again, this is a theme that's come up already today about how we, we naturally gravitate towards social media. And that actually, women are really, really good at it. 
we, are, we have taken that campfire mentality where you sit around and communicate and chat and turned it into being the masters of networking online. I mean, I don't know how many of you in the room are a member of a network or go to, go to social networking groups. I'm here today because I network with Simone and various other people. Absolutely, we are really good at it. Whereas I think men tend to use social media in a very different way. They, they, they text because they want to know the football results. They want to know how much the guitar is they want to buy or the smart car. It's very tactical. It's very instructional. It is very, very goal-focused. The other area where we differ is that lovely subject of sex. Okay, our very attractive man here, not. Why is it that a really hideously ugly man can laugh a woman into bed just by making her laugh? Well, there is a scientific reason for that. Somewhere deep-rooted in our primal brains, we are part of the animal kingdom. And if you look at male and female animals in the wild, what does a female animal do when she is submissive? At her most submissive, she shows the male her neck. And what do we do when we laugh? We throw our heads back in gay abandon, revealing our creamy white necks. And those men are just, you know, they're just putty in our hands, or maybe we're putty in their hands. The other thing that's happening is that when we laugh, and why people make Make, make each other laugh in the, in, the, in the art of sexual pursuit is because laughter reduce, releases those all-important endorphins, those happy, happy hormones that relax you, that prepare you. And in that state, you're just, you're just happy to go with whatever he looks like, quite frankly. I am over-egging it. <laughs> okay, so that's a little, little pot shot of the, of the science behind it. Um, and we, as funny women and my company has been going for 13 years, and we've never really put any thought into this, and we've started to do a lot of work with companies, helping women within companies to be more confident, and we thought, let's, let's conduct a study. And we were very, very privileged to work along with the University of East London Centre of Excellence for Women Entrepreneurs, um, and we did, uh, we did a study where we undertook to look at uh, its 3,000 articles, 50 newspapers, or pay, uh, 50 academic papers, apologies, and these spanned a period of 40 years or more. Um, it's very interesting. I'm only, only going to be able to read you a couple of very quick quotes from the study, but they do show you just a little pot shot of what people in business think of women using humor. This is my favorite uh, quote from 1975. Um, it is axiomatic. I can't do the American accent, I'm sorry, in middle-class American society, that first, women can't tell jokes. They are bound to ruin the punchline. They mix up the order of things, and so on. Moreover, they don't get jokes. In short, women have no sense of humor. <laughs> Who knew? It's a bit like Mad Men, isn't it? That was from 1975. Fast forward to 2011, and to be honest, it's not a great deal better, but let's see what you think. Recent research has suggested that female bosses are less likely to make jokes in the boardroom. When they did, more than 80% of their quips were met with silence. <laughs> by comparison, 90% of jokes made by men were met with a positive response. Who knew? Okay, we probably didn't need the research to know that, but it... It is interesting, isn't it, that still over 40 years, uh, com uh, comedy and humor, if used in a business uh, context, is very much associated with masculinity, which back goes back to the difference of the brains and the, and the goal-focused and the way men's brains work differently. So to conclude, uh, I would like us to go away from here and start what I call a comedy revolution. Now, we've already started it, and in fact, last week, we had 200 women. We were launching a, women's net, uh, launching a brand new women's network within a very large property development company. And we had 200 women in their head offices running around doing improvisation, sketch character comedy, stand-up comedy, and body language or clowning, to use its uh, proper expression. 
And we had these women running around. And the net result was, the next day, the company was absolutely inundated, saying, we've never been to an event like that. We feel so confident. We've just enjoyed the whole bonding thing so much. I've, we've met women that we've never met within the company before, and I feel like I've known them forever. And you just can't buy that feeling. So that's something I really want to start and get you all out doing. So if we can start our comedy revolution, just think of what we can do with it. We can take our wonderful sort of campfire community atmosphere and take that into the office. We, can, we know we can communicate. We're really good at that. We're really good verbally, and we're really good on social media. We are absolutely brilliant at multitasking. You know, we can make the tea, do the minutes, tell the boss to get a better suit. I don't know. We, we can do all of that. We are clever. We are brilliant. And we're also brilliant and absolutely fantastic at making each other laugh, whether it be within our own little unit amongst ourselves or in a room like this. We are great at it. And it's that that I think we, I want to take away from here. I think it is laughter and humor that can give us momentum. The only one tip I'd leave you with, if you're very comfortable around using humor and you think you've got a joke up your sleeve in the next meeting, just be careful that you don't upstage your boss. Thank you.